So today we're going to make some concrete tiles that are going to act similar to the icing tiles in Candy Crush, where you can't use them. They're essentially a blank space to begin with, but if you make a match next to them in one of the four cardinal directions, then the piece will be destroyed, and it'll be a usable space on the board again. So first thing we're going to do is import some art. So I have some art right here for what I'm calling concrete space. So I'm just going to pull this directly into my art folder. Okay, Yeah, I pulled that into assets for some reason. Uh, okay, and then this is 128 by 128, and I want this to take up pretty much the entire space. So I'm going to set the pixels per unit to 128, and then click Apply. Next, we're going to be using the licorice uh, tile, the lock tile, as kind of our uh, template for it. So I'm going to pull my prefab into the world but I don't want any changes I make to this be reflected on the lock tile. So I'm going to go to Game Object and break the prefab instance. Let's rename this right now. Let's call it Concrete Tile. And let's change the art. So right now it's using the locks PNG. I'm going to make it be Concrete instead. And I'm going to leave the hit points to 1. Uh, sorting layer is fine. So I'm going to go back to my prefabs and pull this into there so that I now have a concrete tile prefab. And then I'm going to delete this from my scene. Next, I'm going to open up my board script. And I already made uh, an enumerator for what tile it is, or what, what tile kind it is. Um, so now I just need to add some other variables. First, I need to make a uh, game object for the prefab. So public game object. I'm going to call this concrete tile prefab. And then I need to make an array to hold my concrete tiles. So this is going to be private background tile width by height. And this is going to be for the concrete tiles. And then I'm going to initialize that array in the start method. So down here in start Right after I initialize my lock tiles, I'm going to say concrete tiles is equal to a new background tile array width by height. All right, cool. And now um, I already have a method that's really, really close to what I need in this generate lock tiles. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it separately. I'm going to change this from lock tiles to concrete tiles. And then uh, if, the if the tile kind is concrete, then I'm going to instantiate the concrete tile prefab. And I'm going to add it to my concrete tiles array. All right, cool. Now I also want to generate those in my setup method. So not lock tiles, concrete tiles. Now with these, I don't want there to be pieces spawning there. So when I'm doing my double for loop, I want to check to see if um, blank spaces uh, is null. But I also want to check to see if concrete tiles ij uh, is null. So I can actually just put a not there and it'll return um, whether or not there is something there. So if it's if I do not concrete tiles ij it'll return true if uh, that space is null. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back into Unity here. Uh, Let's go to my board and let's make my concrete tile prefab connected correctly. And then I want to go to the current world I'm using. Uh, set all of these to concrete, which they currently are. And then if I hit play, um, I should have about half the functionality right now. So if I click OK. So there the tiles are, but if I make a match next to them, they're not destroying. They're still there. So essentially, they're functioning like a blank space. So let's fix that, and let's make them destroy. 
So to do that, uh, I'm going to use a new method that I'm going to put right next to my destroy matches at method. So right here, I'm going to make a method that I'm going to call private void damage concrete. All right, and this is going to take two arguments. It's going to take a column and it's going to take a row. Now, you're not damaging the concrete at this column and this row. You're damaging concrete that are in the four cardinal directions away from it. So, first I'm going to say if column is greater than zero, meaning if we're in at least the second column, then we can check left. So, we're going to say if concrete tiles, column minus one row. So, if it's not null, then um, we're going to give it damage, the same way that we gave damage um, to the breakable tiles and the liquor tiles. So then we're going to uh, do concrete tiles, take damage, and then I want to just copy this. Uh, paste that right there. And change this from breakable to concrete. And change this from breakable to concrete. And then instead of it being column row, again, it's going to be column minus one row, because we're not doing damage to that space, we're doing damage to the space that's to the left. Um, okay, cool. So that's one direction. I'm going to copy that. And this isn't going to be an else if, this is going to be a straight if, because we could need to do damage in more than one direction. So this is for the left, let's do the right. Column needs to be less than minus one. And then this is going to be column plus one, column plus one, column plus one. And then this is going to be if row is greater than zero. This is going to be row minus one, row minus one, and row minus one. And then this one is going to be if row Okay, and then this one uh, is going to be if a row is less than height minus one. And instead of being column minus one row, it's column row plus one. So I'll just change these really quickly. So what this method does is it gives damage to any concrete space that might be nearby. Now, what I also want to do, oh no, no, yeah, that's good, I'm already doing that, cool. So, if I go up here to my destroy matches at script, right after I do damage to the lock tiles, I can just add damage concrete and then pass in the current column and row. Cool, so I'll save that. Let's go back into Unity here. Let's hit play. And it's going to think for a second. All right. And let's make a match near the concrete. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Okay. Damage concrete. Column is greater than zero. Concrete tiles. Oh, I never actually damaged the concrete. All right. So then, uh, concrete tiles, uh, column minus, actually, I'll just do this as column row. Don't take damage. One. And the reason I'm doing it that way, so I can copy this. And then, so now it's column minus one. And. This is going to be column plus one. And this is going to be column row minus one. And then this one is going to be uh, column row plus one. There we go. I forgot to actually add the damage part to it. Okay. 
So now if I go back into YouTube here, or not YouTube, into Unity here, uh, and hit play, uh, let's see if this will work the way it's supposed to. Alright, and... Oh, okay, cool. Um, let's make a couple more matches here nearby just to make sure that we're, we're all good. Uh, Alright, cool. And now these pieces are just as interactable as any others. Just like that. Um, yeah, and so now we have some pieces that are like the icing. Now if you wanted to, you can make it so that they take more than one hit to be destroyed. Because Candy Crush has, has icing and then it has like icing with jelly in it or jam, or whatever that is. Um, and all you would have to do then is just add extra hit points to it, maybe make a different prefab for it. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter to find out as soon as I post a new video. Um, you can join the Discord, where I'm chatting every day. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.